Welcome back to another edition of Zero Blog 30. Today we have three rounds in the magazine. Round number one, old Winston Churchill. His teeth, his dentures are up for auction. Um, there's an auction that's coming out. Winston's got his dentures. I don't know if you knew this or not, Cons, but he started experiencing periodontal disease when he was like in his late teens. I think it's because he was born around the turn of the century and they just had yuck mouse over there all the time. But he started getting dentures when he was mm -hmm. in his 20s. Like his family was little well to do. So he has these dentures that are oh. gold plated on the top. The top dentist in the country at the time, maybe even the world, is the ones that made them. And he had several different sets, but the primary set that he used and all of his World War II speeches in that time period of his life is up for auction. So I'm going to ask you how much you think those are going to go for. And then some other historical relics or body parts that have been for sale. And then I'm going to ask Hans which ones he would want if he was able to purchase some. Um, we're going to do that. The secondly, there was a Navy captain who was relieved from command. One of the reasons why is because when one of her junior officers was looking over the bow of the ship and pointing out to junior sailors, there are some dolphins. She thought it lacked discipline, so she punished him for it, <laughs> which I think is just fantastic. Mm. I mean, if they're fucking around, you don't have time to dolphin goof if you're out there on the seven seas, right, Cons? You just don't. I mean, our Navy, our Navy is busy right now, and they cannot be busy with Dolphin Watch. As awesome as dolphins are, don't get me wrong. Anytime I see dolphins when I'm down the shore, you get excited. Oh, yeah. Everybody gets excited when they see dolphins 10 out of 10 times. But if you're aboard a destroyer, a battleship, that's got to be down the list of things you're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And then on that me. note, with things that are taking up too much time, the Army came up with a new program. That is going to help folks like Captain Cons whenever he gets out of West Point a ton. It's going to take a lot off their plates, which they're going to be thrilled about. And we're going to talk about that without our good pal Katie. I'm sure you've noticed that her voice going, mm hmm, or shining in like that at the very beginning of the show <laughs> has been missed. Poor Kate, man. Her back is just absolutely wrecked. Like she's not in today. She's going to physical therapy today. And hopefully she'll be back because she can't do hardly anything right now. I just feel awful for her. She told me the other day that it, her back hurts more than her pregnancies do, which is crazy, Tony. Crazy. Wow. She That's was like, I'm nuts. in more pain right and now I than when horrible. I gave birth, without a doubt. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of her children, she's a very active mom. For anybody who follows her on social media, you see that she is not a plot my kid in front of a screen mom. She is, let's go to the museum. Let's mm -hmm. go to the park. And for her not to be able to be active with her kids, I know is definitely eaten at her. So I hope that she gets better soon, gets the help that she needs, and ultimately just heals up. And, and honestly, this podcast should be her only documentation that she needs at the VA. <laughs> like, we've talked about it for months. Kate needs, she needs 30. She needs 30 for her back at least, right? 30 is the minimum. <laughs> bump her up. We need, we need to bump yeah. those numbers up. We need to start calling for that when people come on the show. Give them a little bit of disability. Yeah, you know what we should do? This might be a HIPAA violation. This might be invasive. We should ask people what their disability percentage is. <laughs> like I'm curious. Veterans when they come different. on the show. Hey, what's your VA disability yeah. status? Yeah. Ask them, ask them like, that I don't know, how um, many people they killed. If you ever... Yeah, exactly. That's those are the two questions you ask every veteran. I don't know if you ever listen to uh, Dan Patrick's show, but when his callers call up, they always give their height and weight. I don't know where that started or how it started, but that could be a thing with our guests. They just come on. Hey, um, uh, Joe Smith, forty percent tinnitus. Really? Back they, I didn't know Dan Patrick. Me and Kate used to do that on the Chaps and Kate show when somebody would call in. <laughs> me and Kate weight? would guess their height and weight instead. So whenever somebody oh. would call into the show. We would have, they would have to say, you're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. And based on how they said that, Kate and I would guess their weight. And we were, I mean, I did it on the uh, right. Barstool Telethon that we had a couple months ago during um, our Cyber Monday mm. thon or something like that. I did it then. I got, I'm still good, a little bit rusty. Need to get back into it for sure. Um, but today we have some pretty good topics. And I, the first one, I wasn't going to talk about this, and I saw it a couple hours ago, and I was like, we absolutely have to. Because old Winston Churchill, he's pretty important in the war game, I would say. Wouldn't you, Cons? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say if you look back in history, his name keeps popping up from time to time in the old history books, in the annals. Some good, some bad. 
But from um, one of the sources that I think it was from Encyclopedia Britannica is actually the one that put it out. It says one lucky collector will soon have a chance to own a unique piece of British history as a set of Winston Churchill's false teeth head to auction next month. The used dentures won't be cheap, though. They're expected to sell for how much do you think, Cons? Cons can't see it on the sheet. I haven't sent it just for this very purpose. How much do you think Winston Churchill's um, teeth are going to go for? Dude, auctions are so weird. And people who have that level of money, it's bragging rights and they don't care. I'm going to say. OK, I'm going to save that 125K is the original guess. I'm going to keep going. And then if you want to change your your answer throughout, you can. Churchill long suffered dental okay. problems and had lost some of his teeth by his 20s. So he had several sets of upper dentures made. The false teeth helped Churchill maintain his distinctive speaking style, and he usually carried two sets with him at all times. One set is thought to have been buried with Churchill, who died in 1965, while another is on display at the Royal College of Surgeons um, Museum in London. The gold-mounted partial denture is now being auctioned off at a date. Um, he started wearing those at the beginning of World War II and finished wearing them at the end. So it's some, from one dentist made all of them. He liked them so much that he would send them back to him, getting them tightened up, getting new models. So they basically treated them like Forrest Gump's legs with these teeth. Knowing all that now, Cons, that he gave all of the major speeches about World War II, about the Nazis, about Italy, all those things. He wore those teeth then. How much do you think? Let me start by saying I'm not surprised to hear that he had dentures. I never knew that he had dentures until you told me today. But I'm not surprised given what dental care was back then, especially across the pond. But he was such a great order that that's why I never even thought about, oh, he probably has dentures because he sounds weird. Like when now Trump does that, that to sometimes too, like where he'll almost lose his teeth in his mouth. Like you can hear. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. That's and people make fun. The old, there's a, so much shit to make fun of Trump and Biden for having dentures in your late seventies is pretty fucking normal, right? Like that's normal. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're of that age and you grew up when dental care wasn't what it is today, it was almost inevitable. I, I would look, be curious to see what the percentages are, but I would venture to that a vast majority of people who are North of 65 have some sort of and, false he, and Trump's on the record out. as being a big diet coke guy can't imagine that helps yeah no no shot that definitely all right so what what do you think MT. last guess but i'm bumping that up i'm bumping it up to a quarter million i am going to get dan katz to buy these teeth because they the estimated is 10 grand 10 10 that's grand. it 10 you gotta do that you gotta Dude. get in low um, we absolutely need Winston Churchill's dentures. It's got to be in the office, right behind me, dude. How can I not have them here? I need yes. those teeth. Yes. Like I was, mm -hmm. I was legitimate. I, I, like if this article comes out and it's like what Con said, it's 125, 200K, whatever. I don't bat an eye at that. I'm like, that makes sense. Like it's a historical person. I mean, hell, Bert and Tom Segura, like Tom bought Bert. Hitler's coffee cup for his birthday. Like, and they lost their minds about right. it. Right. <laughs> so you're having that. And I think he spent like right. 80. So when you see 80 grand for a coffee cup, Churchill is on the same plane, not out historically, I would say historically known just as much as Hitler, like just as much. A thousand percent, because guess what? I mean, you know, you don't want to give too much credit to, to, to the UK, but I mean, without Churchill, without the Brits, like the course of human yeah. history is forever right. altered. Who knows what happened in, in the war against the Nazis with, without the help of the Brits. I, I so, mean, I think I, we know how it would have gone. Way. It would have gone poorly. Like it, it would have gone. Yeah, we're all speaking I German I think we needed right every now. aspect yeah. of what we had to get the job done. And like the Brits uh -huh. were definitely a part of that. So, so was Churchill. I couldn't believe that it was only that much. So I went through and I'm going to go through a couple other historical things and to see if you can guess okay. how much it would be worth now. Okay, so the uh, Codex of Leicester that was written by Leonardo da Vinci. In 1994, Bill Gates purchased the scientific notebook that was written by da Vinci, and uh, it contains all the artist's observations and ideas like astron astronomy, 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 astronomy. I've been struggling with saying, I'm, am I having strokes on this show? Like the last couple weeks, 
I've been struggling with pronunciation cons. I don't know what's going on here. I need to go to the VA. Bump though, that's got to be another 20. Give yeah. me another 20. I can't speak. <laughs> it's important for my job. And I was just going to say, it's part of your job. You should absolutely be covered Thank for you. that. So he has that. Water flow and geology are the things that are written down in there. Bill Gates purchased it in 1994. For what price do you think it was then? $50,000. This one is like can Churchill's teeth being 10 grand. That book, Gates bought it for $30.8 million. How is that? Wow. I mean, obviously Da Vinci and there's some like but teeth. Like, come on, man. Like, it's his teeth. You get that much more than his teeth? The second one, the Magna Carta. In 2007, a copy of the Magna Carta dated from 1297 was sold at auction for how much, Cons? $21.3 million. $21. million for that. Okay, I suck at this game, but <laughs> I'm having fun. a good time. Um, the Pink Star Diamond. In 2017, the Pink Star Diamond, which is a 59-carat pink diamond, was sold at auction for a record-breaking amount. What do you think that amount was? Not to be confused True. with the heart of the ocean that rose selfishly dumped like back into bitch. the ocean without yep. telling anybody. What a horrible oh, move by idiot. Her. Guy spends his whole life looking for that thing, and you're just like, that's Whoop. generational yeah, okay. wealth you just tossed into the sea, you idiot. Yeah, what a moron. What a moron. Um... 75 million. that's really close con 71.2 million dollars i'm gonna count that as a win because you right, didn't go right. over excellent work oh you did go over We're sorry take the win back uh yeah that's that's rough <laughs> um the apollo 11 moon bag in 2017 a bag containing lunar dust particles collected during nasa's apollo 11 mission was sold um for how much the bag that was on the moon Just because I think so many more people, not so many, but more people have been, even though that was the first one, 800K. Pretty close again. That one went for $1.8 million. Okay, right. so now right. that's I'm artifacts. Like, that's just things, possessions. Now let's do historical relics. So if you remember, like, relics from the old Catholic times, like, they used to have, like, a St. Peter relic was there. There was one, I forget who it was. Who was the first martyr? Um, the first martyr, whoever it was, the Ooh. Christian martyr that was on the road with Saul. He, they had like apparently some, one of his teeth, I believe. And that went around the Catholic church for years. And that went on auction for like $90 million or something like that. Something crazy. So Napoleon Bonaparte's. Steve, St. Stephen. Does that sound right? St. Stephen. Stephen. Yep. I, yep. Um, so he was the, I didn't know yeah, that. I first, the first martyr. Um, so the first one that here, like the actual relics off of people, a lock of Napoleon Bonaparte's hair. It's been sold at auction with fetching some substantial amount of options. These locks are typically acquired and from the time of his exile on Mount Helena. Which one? How much do you think Napoleon's hair would go for? Here's the thing. I mean, how, how do you prove to me that that's Napoleon's hair? I'm only, I think that's only fetching 5K. And if, if it's I don't more, know, because they have all those ways to do it, cons. You've seen Antique Rogue Show. You know, they have oh. the experts that are able to identify those types of things. Hell, they could bring in Pawn Stars. I bet Pawn Stars could figure it out. <laughs> that's Napoleon's hair or not. Yeah. Uh, the Napoleon's hair went for a smooth 17 grand. I'd rather have Churchill's teeth. All right. A thousand percent. A thousand percent, because it's it's more weird to look at. I mean, I don't know if you watched the more recent uh, Shane Gillis stand up on Netflix. He talks about going and seeing George Washington's mm -hmm. dentures, similar situation where they took the teeth from all sorts of different sources to include slaves, which is obviously we rebuke slavery mm -hmm. on this show. We're not fans of slavery, but it was like slaves, animals, and they all just kind of like mashed it all together. Imagine what that thing looks like and big Forget daddy it. i think really bamboozle like that was propaganda that might have been a cia deep op mm. like on big daddy because they were just <laughs> like his teeth are made from wood so then you have an entire generation of people yeah. that thought it was and they thought that lamb and tuna fish went together um which is not true either the <laughs> next one albert einstein's brain how much do you think that bad boy went for that's a big one that's a big one 
I think of all the brains, that's a top three brain you could get, right? It has to be. Yeah, it's the top three most well-known brain. <laughs> say Galileo's sure. up there. Let's see who else. Yeah, Socrates, maybe Socrates maybe could be up there. Einstein's in the conversation. No matter what period you're talking about, he's in the he he's in the conversation. Yeah, he's a top brain guy for sure. I'm saying that's three million dollars. No, Eighty five grand is what it went for. And I think that's okay. one Dan's got to buy right. too. At least Dave. Yeah. Like that's one week of the yeah. ponies, like one pony race. Like get Einstein's brain. All right, next mm -hmm. up. Charles Dickens. This one's not his body, but there's a letter opener that was made from his cat's paw. How much do you think that went for? Oh, 25K. That's cool, but I don't think that that's fetching that too much. That went for $195,000. How? How I'm is that you, man, the world more expensive than Einstein's brain? You can make a million of those. I don't know. I can't make heads or tails of the auction world no, at all. It's the tail and or the head. Of it's Nick all Nick. obviously yeah. arbitrary. It's the head or tail of Nick of Chick, Charles Dickinson's cat. Then maybe, but not. So if you mm -hmm. could buy any of them, I went around the office and asked some people. Um, Nikki Smokes did not understand the question at all. I asked him, and he said boobs, which was. Of course he didn't. I don't. I mean, sure, like we all like tits. Who, who doesn't like tits? But I mean, that's that wasn't the answer. Um, Chief had a great response. He would like to buy Neil Armstrong's boots to inspect them for actual moon dust to see if there's going to be there. Ooh. Um, let's see. Who, Stephen Shea said that he would get a T-Rex skull. And then Za said that he would want to buy Shaq's femur and implant it into his own femur, which would make, I mean, okay. unless Za did the entire skeleton, that would make, that would make him look weird as hell. Like with yeah, just the rest of his body yeah, and then Shaq's weird. femurs on him. He'd probably be, I mean, that like six, five, like just with Shaq's femur. Possibly. Tall. Yeah. Yeah. So who, if you could buy one historically, who would it be, Cons? Well, I mentioned George Washington's dentures. I think that would be a cool one. I was just thinking, I wonder if President Kennedy had some sort of journal or diary because I can only imagine what he wrote in there in terms of all his what we can say conquests. Yeah. I just think that would be a, 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 a tawdry read. And I, I think it would be fascinating. Um, I think <laughs> FDR's wheelchair would be a fun one. You break that oh, out yeah. at parties that you could turn that into oh, a drinking yeah. game somehow. Like you got to sit in yeah. FDR's chair. Treating uh, him like the X games. Cool. Doing um, like half vert with it. Yeah. 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 And then I, I think if you could get me a weapon, from like Alexander the Great. I just, I don't know. I, I just think that would be really fascinating just because we're not using weapons like that anymore these days, the way he was using them. So I just think that'd be a cool thing. And then the last one, I forget which astronaut it was, but whoever the astronaut was that hit a golf ball on the moon, if I could get that, like, wasn't that golf Neil Armstrong club too? And display that. No, I don't think it was. I think it was the next time oh. we went to the moon. If I recall correctly, I wonder, where did that go? Just straight wow. forever? My, yeah. Um, no, it didn't go forever. I think I've read something somewhere once that it, it went down somewhere on the moon. It's still up there on the moon, but it didn't go forever. Uh, mine would be I, I went basically biblical with it. I would yeah. love to have Jesus's hammer because he was a carpenter. Like getting that bad boy oh, would be yeah. a good one. Another Jesus won the crown of thorns. You could you could flip that for a pretty penny if you had that boy. Wow. And then I would also do Moses' yeah. staff that he part of the Red Sea with, which would be an incredible thing mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. And then I'd also want, um, you know how like you can go, I think Feidelberg and KFC did it where you could do the mold the willy where you do like your dick, like where you get molded dicks. You could make like a dildo from it. Sure. I think I would want that of King Solomon because he had 20,000 wives and concubines. So he's got to have a dynamic dick if that's the case. I'd love to have that bad boy on the wall. It's got to have a crazy hook yeah. in it or something. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. All these years, you would think I've asked everything of you at this point. I don't think I've ever mm -hmm. asked you of this. You mentioned three stories from the Bible and, and three figures from the Bible. I posit that 
the Bible for thousands of years or hundreds of years was just passed down by word of mouth. And as we all know, when you tell stories by word of mouth over the years, they get changed, they get exaggerated. What do you make of the stories in the Bible? Because I think we'll take the the, the, the fishes and the loaves of bread and then it was fed 5,000 people. It probably wasn't 5,000 people. It, you know, it was probably, you know, 50, but it just kind of gets exaggerated. And I've always been of the belief that you don't take the Bible literally. Just curious how you view the, the Bible and the stories in the Bible and the various miracles uh, that we that we read in the Bible and then just the various relics and the folks in the Bible. That's uh, a great question. So I think one, the historical difference it, like is remarkable. The difference between the biblical times and non-biblical times and the, the traditions that came about. For example, Christian wasn't a word until the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD mm -hmm. is when that word first came about. There was no really any historical references until that time of Jesus ever being referred to as Jesus the Christ. And now he's just called Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't ever that historically. As far as real or not real or... Um, like just an example, a parable or an allegory. It depends on the book of the Bible. A lot of people like A.W. Pink is a primary philosopher and theologian about the book of Genesis. He says that the entire beginning, Genesis chapter one through four, is all nothing but an allegory where it's not an historical document where it can say one day. And that's the reason why later on in the Bible, it'll say one year is a thousand days and a thousand days is to a year. And that's the way that it is whenever you're on an infinite time scale. So Genesis, some people believe, is an allegory. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, so not John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, that's what's known as the synoptic gospels. So you have all three stories of mm -hmm. the accounts of Jesus's life that are basically matched up, sync, sync. And then John comes in afterwards. And so there's a little bit more detail behind or quote detail behind what John is saying. And a lot of people have said that's because John was influenced by a lot of Socrates, like because that was going on at the same time, the way that Jesus spoke and he taught parables, loaves of the sea, like the way that he did that was a sac uh, support. There we go again. Can't fucking pronounce the word. Socratic method like he had the Socratic method where he mm -hmm. stood up and he taught like that was all from Greek thought so John chapter one where it says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word came and dwelt among us that's a very philosophical thought of having something that's rich in tradition that has laws attached to it that became the human embodiment of something and that's the platonic view of the forms so he was talking about how there's one specific person that is designed to be in this specific place at a specific time and everything else is a relic that's what he was saying that god came down in the perfect form and was jesus yeah sorry not to go off on a tangent because I, I think you could take that conversation for another few hours but i just find it fascinating that I think the Bible leaves a lot up for interpretation and it's, it's up for everyone's individual interpretation, but I'm always fascinated by, by how people view it. And to hear that perspective that you just provided, I think is just yet another perspective that makes yeah, a lot of sense. I think that sense. was one of my favorite you know, things about learn like teaching back in the day is that there's certain things that are taken from that time period and put into today's perspective when those letters like the letters to the ephesians the letter of the folks of colossi like all of those people were a specific time specific place and sometimes even a specific person that needed to hear this now if i'm giving you advice like if you called me and like hey dude i'm thinking about this or if i called you like hey dude i'm thinking about this the advice that you would give me if one situation occurred and the the advice i would give you comparatively to the advice I would give Kate or comparatively to the advice I would give my mom, all of that is going to change based on the context of where you're at, like socioeconomically, where you're at educationally, all those different things. That's the same way that Paul treated a lot of those churches, like to the church of Ephesians. Like he told them what needed to be going on because of what was happening in Ephesus. Like it was like all of those things counteract and everybody grabs a hold of the Bible and acts like that it's all applicable to everybody in the same exact place. Well, that's like saying what happens to me here in Chicago should be the exact same way the things that happen in St. Petersburg, Russia. And that's just simply not the case.
Mm-mm. No. And it can't be. Right. All right. So, well, that was different. Anyway. <laughs> Let's sorry. move. Uh, if you need, if you've been going through some stuff and that brought up some old bad church memories, maybe you should talk to our friends at BetterHelp, right, guys? <laughs> yes. Because as we know, Zero Block 30 is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, I, I think a common misconception about relationships is it, they have to be easy to be quote unquote right. Sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. I think you and I can both attest as, as married fellas that marriage doesn't happen by accident. You both got to put in work. Uh, I, I can speak for myself and my wife that we both put in the work. We have these conversations. You know, we, we both utilize therapy to, to make ourselves better and work at it together. And And that therapy can be a place for you to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, not just marriage, whether you're friends, your work, anyone really, because there's, there's relationships in all different forms. Um, so if you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Everybody's got a busy, busy schedule. They're going to make it work for you. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I think We've both talked about instances where we were talking to somebody for therapy and we realized, ah, they weren't a good fit. And that's okay. So you can switch, no charge. So become your own soulmate. Whether you're looking for one or not, visit betterhelp.com slash zero today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash zero. All right, so let's get into the first actual topic of the day. It comes to us from Task and Purpose. It says that a Navy captain's yelling in public, quote, humiliation of her officers and crew was so severe and frequent that once made the mistake of pointing out the dolphin swimming nearby on the ship's bridge made her enraged to the point that she was screaming that fear quartered above the USS Lake Erie, a scathing Navy investigation found could have created a, quote, higher risk of having safety or operational mishap and an unsafe command environment where sailors do not exercise judgment. Um, There's been a couple stories about what she actually did, and some of those include whenever she was on the ship's deck and she was in there where they tell them to steer or fucking go faster or slower, go left or right, whatever the hell they do in ships. She was up in the command deck (laughs) and she was giving out commands and orders and somebody asked her to repeat herself that she they didn't hear her and they scream she screamed at him pay the attention when i talk nobody else does everybody listens first up that how do you feel about that that approach everybody has a different Mm -hmm. leadership style and different styles work for different people however i don't think leading from fear ever works. And it's specifically for the reason that's mentioned in this round where sailors, they don't exercise sound judgment because they're coming from a place of fear and they're not thinking about what's the best decision to be made here. They're thinking what is going to get me not yelled at by my commander. And when you start getting yourself into a mental pretzel about decisions that a lot of times need to be made in a very small window of time, you're going to run into a lot of issues. So I do not like leading from fear. I'm okay with being stern or raising your voice when necessary. I think that works for some individuals, but you don't have to scream or be loud to be a good leader either. I just think it just sometimes goes hand in hand with leading from fear. And I don't think that's ever uh, a good idea. And the last thing I will say, the USS Lake Erie, really? We didn't have any Terrible. other better names Terrible. for this ship. We, we, we named it after a fucking lake. Listen, great lakes. The They're great average. lakes are great. They should be the average. Awesome. Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> be that as it may, you have so many people who have distinguished themselves throughout Naval history slap somebody's name on yeah. that ship not the but USS Lake then Erie. you never know so whoever you pick I'm in like 40 years they're going to be problematic <laughs> you have to change their name yeah, probably <laughs> they're probably. going to be that way so, what do you what do you I think, think about it depends one situational i think that the situation that you're in in the training environment yep. or the operational environment that you're in means a lot um 
Two, I think it's the position of the person that is doing it. In this case, you have the overall commander, the captain. So for those of us that have RB and Marine brains and Air Force brains, captain is an 06 colonel. So she would be the leading person, the commanding officer of the entire ship. I think in that situation, you need more calm, cool, and collected leadership. I think if this, if that mm -hmm. exact same thing happened from the XO, I think it's okay. If it happens from the command chief petty officer, I think it's okay. Coming from the actual commander, I feel like she has to be a lot more calm in that situation. But once it's operational, if it's operational and you're like legit doing stuff, I don't care what you say. Like it's about getting the job done. Yeah. And if you can't do it and you can't hear, get the fuck out of the seat because somebody else is trained to do it too. So I think in those situations, not all, and maybe not in this one, but I think that that can be in an effective leadership style. I agree. It reads to me like she was doing this all right. the time. Yeah. And just berating people. And I don't think that's effective. I agree with you in the heat of a moment, in the heat of battle, there's going to be screaming. There's going to be yelling. I also think. I, I also don't like it from really, officers, period. But you know that. I don't like it when officers yell yeah. at all. No, I'm, I'm with you there. Overall, if you had to choose be a yeller or not a yeller, I would choose not being Especially not a yeller. Especially as an officer. I just don't. Right. As an, uh, I'm, yeah, speaking from an officer, officer's perspective. Absolutely. Um, I also think this, the, the leaders who are very adept at leading other people are able to adjust their style depending on who they're speaking to and who they're leading. Right. That's what I was saying. Like because, giving advice to different people in different ways. Yeah. 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 Because some people respond to yelling one way while another person might respond to the complete opposite and knowing your folks well enough to know who to use your tactics on. That's the mark of a very yeah. Because sometimes, like there would be Marines that I had that if they didn't do what I, I just wouldn't talk to them. Like I would just, I would just ignore mm -hmm. them, and that was enough for them to be like, I got to get my shit tight. Like I want them to talk to me. Like I don't want to feel like I'm out here on an island. And some I would scream at, and some I would talk to calmly. Like there, you're right. Like there has to be different approaches for each di different folks. There is some in here that I absolutely would never agree with. One. Um, the command investigation to appears to have led to the firing of Captain Defant as a commanding officer of the USS Lake Erie. She was reportedly grabbed or struck her off struck her officers while they were on duty on the ship's bridge, alienating the ship's senior enlisted crew known as the Chief's Mess, overreacted to minor transgressions like pointing out the dolphins, and in a briefing to an admiral, failed to mention the abysmal feedback she had received from the crew. I think of besides the physical altercation. If you're an officer and you're talking shit about your senior enlisted leaders, you have jumped the shark. Like you just, that's, I would mm -hmm. say of all the things that a command can do, that's maybe mistake number one. You cannot do that. Yeah. You can't dress people down of higher enlisted ranks in front of everybody. Reading this, grabbing them by the collar. I think that's just a very demeaning move and it's exuding as though you think you're above this person and obviously in rank you are, but that doesn't give you the right to treat them as though they're lesser of a human. Obviously they are a subordinate, but I think when you grab someone by their collar, I don't think you're ultimately going to get the best performance out of them when, when you do something of that nature and you're going to lose the respect of everybody else. In that yeah. And that's one of the well. things that they said happened in November of 2022 as 20,000. Who says 20,000? 20, 20,022. 20, okay, Keith. Okay, 20, Keith. 20,022. 20, I'm really going through it. But <laughs> 2022, as the ship sailed near San Diego, the conning officer, is that it? Conning? That's conning officer. What do they do? Yep. Had trouble hearing yep. a helmsman repeating back the steering orders. The redacted report did not identify any of those names, but they said when the officer did not hear her, she smacked the officer on her collarbone and said, pay attention. The officer smack did not hurt, but freaked her out. And she momentary, momentarily considered leaving her post by turning the con over to Defant. Several crew on the bridge confirmed the, invest, uh, the incident to the investigators. That's one I don't have a problem with because it didn't hurt. 
if you're just like boom pay attention that there if you can't handle that level of correction if that's the isolated incident, if you can't handle that, you have no business being in the military. If that's not something that you can handle a tap on the shoulder, pay attention or a slap down on the shoulder, pay attention. If that's a crime brother, lock me up because <laughs> that, I mean, that kind of thing <laughs> happens all the time, man. Like this is a rough and tumble jump job. If you can't handle like a little bit of let's fucking go. I mean, you get that in middle school football, like it, a coach will be over your yeah. shoulder, like shoulder pads, slap, let's go. Like you get people in the game, get them paying attention. I have no problem with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like, oh, yeah. Like, hey, pay attention. Get them, get let's them go. Like, this is important shit. Like, right, right, that's right. That's fine. I, I think I'm okay with that one as well. As so long as, I mean, we don't have all the context. So long as it wasn't meant to harm the individual and so hard that, you know, you're thinking to yourself, geez, did she just try to hurt her? But I'm I'm with you. I think I'm okay with a little little like recentering of the person. We could say refocusing the person with a little bit of a a physical. I think that's the problem though too. Now nowadays, everybody I mean, who knows what's going to get you in trouble. So even the smallest thing, like if if you were to touch someone and not slap, touch someone on their arm. Who's to say that can get turned around as sexual yeah. harassment in today's day and age? You, you don't know. You, you don't know what, how people feel about being touched. And they're going to run that up the chain of command that, oh, I was uncomfortable because they touched me. When in fact, you just tap them uh, or touch them yeah. on their arm to get their attention. I don't know. It's tough. I think it's tougher. And, and you tell me if you agree. I think it's tougher now more than ever to, to be a leader in the military with everything that they have. Yeah, to do I mean, and that's on both sides. In this not just officer. dealing with right and wrong because that i mean there is the elements of leadership for that like anybody with a brain knows that you can't be like sexually assaulting anybody legit assaulting somebody like yeah. all those different things we'll just toss right. those out the window but if you have like training people to do a job that involves being lethal and that involves having to be okay with eventually pulling the trigger not in all jobs, obviously, but in some jobs where you have, you're going to go kill people. Like a lot of these attack ships, like that are heading over to the Middle East, that are going to go take on the pirates and shit like that. You have to be prepared and to kill somebody. Like if that's the what it comes down to, mm -hmm. and if you're so fragile that you can't handle somebody slapping you on the shoulders to pay attention because what you're going to do is lethal. I just don't know how that's an effective way to run a military. And I'm not saying that it needs to go back to like the seventies boot camps where people are getting the shit beat out of them all the time. And no, but it, you have to be able to have some sort of thick skin, like getting yelled at and like running to the command. I, that shit has gone too far. Like just from what I've seen and like the comments yes. online, like I, I think it's gone too far. Like it, you can't be a pussy. If you, you can't can. yell at somebody, sometimes somebody, listen, I, I am of the belief that sometimes someone just needs to get yelled at and I need to raise my voice or my, you know, my platoon star needs to raise his or her voice to get somebody's attention. And it can't be, oh, that's invading my safe space. And now I don't know that I can do my job. Well, do you think the enemy is going to give a single care about your safe space? No. So it, it's such a fine line. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm grateful. I don't have yeah, to walk dude. it in the military Especially right now. With as a cell leader, phones I don't and know. TikTok and worried about getting leaked on Instagram. Uh, like you having yeah. people set up cameras in there. So when you're doing you like you're doing room inspections, everybody sees everything and people don't know that you're supposed to go in there and white glove inspection. You're doing your job that you were ordered to do, but it now looks like you're overbearing like the job of being, a first sergeant, I feel like right now and being in charge of the barracks and doing things has got to be miserable, man. I like guess it's just got to be not a good time. Yeah, but you know what? I, I, I would give so much credit to our, our, our NCOs and our officers now who have probably adapted yeah. and, yeah, and, and sure. changed with the times and, and probably know how to handle that. You and I are saying that because we're, we're quite mm -hmm. far removed from the, the military that we served in and how our leadership styles uh, would be perceived today. I have to imagine that they've just adjusted fire and they do it differently now and it works for them. 
Um, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know that I would be prepared right now, this second, to take my leadership style. Oh, I'd have style to take an EO course. <laughs> Without a doubt. I'd be in an EO course. I'd have to take probably three or four. I mean, of all the, I think yeah. about the stuff now that comes out on social media and the things that I did personally when I was in. I was naked all the time. Like, I, there's, it's just a different military in a lot of ways and a lot of that's good and some of it's bad but i think a lot of it is good um overall but, yes. all right let's move on to round number two this one is going to make cons happy because as part of a new pilot program the army's material command recently told the company commanders at two major bases to have their soldiers turn in ex sx excess equipment that they had amassed from decades of, of deployments Troops turned in 37,000 pieces of gear. And not all this gear was just like camelbacks and fucking molly packs and all that stuff. But a lot of it was like M249s, uh, Mark 19s, M240 Bravos, Mark 17s, M2s, M4s, like legit weapons that they had to take care of. And cons, give me an example of what it's like whenever you are, let's take, go for your depo deployment where you're a platoon leader and you had all your Joes out there, what was it like getting your um, accountability every month? It's brutal. It's brutal because everybody in theory is issued the exact same equipment, no matter who you are, what your job is, at least in, in the units I served in. So then in theory, everybody should have the same stuff and be able to present it when we go for inspection or we're doing, um, what's the word you just used? Accountability. Um, accountability uh, formation. Yeah. Some people aren't good at <laughs> maintaining positive control of their equipment. Things get lost, especially when you talk about deployments, things get thrown into containers to get to and from deployments and they get unpacked and maybe things get misplaced, not on purpose. It's just the nature of taking equipment, CONUS, and bringing it to deployments. It's just a headache. It really is. And then you might lose something. Okay, so you go get another one, but then you find your other piece of equipment that you thought you had lost. So now you got two of the same thing. So now you got excess. And, and there's, I think that's what and there's paperwork that was store. missing in between. So if you if you can't find something, you got yes. a missing gear statement. And then if you find it, you got to have another yeah. gear statement. You have to, It's just statement after statement after statement. And you would think, oh, that's not that bad. Just write it in. No, it's got to be on the official letterhead. Everything has to be correct. You have to send it up through your chain of command to make sure that it gets to the battalion commander so that he or she can sign it off. It takes hours, man, hours. Every time that you do it, you have all your shit out there. It takes forever. Well, and the biggest part as a commander, you are ultimately responsible for that equipment. So if something's missing, like if you're missing a saw, I mean, that, that money's got to come from somewhere and it's going to come out of your pockets. Is, so when you hear these stories of people staying till all hours of the night till missing equipment turns up or you're out doing a field problem and you field exercise and something gets lost and okay, cool. We're not going back to the rear till we find it. And people are out in the, the field an extra day, extra two days. That's because somebody doesn't want to pay for that. And it's infuriating knowing that that congressional report came out that there's like $3.2 trillion of unaccounted for gear, unaccounted for weapons, but you're going to make a company commander who's 25 years old, 26 years old, pay for that whenever the highest levels of command have no idea where there's still cons, six nuclear weapons, warheads that we don't know where they are. I swear Come to God, on. I saw another article that they're still looking for it. They're finding leads. How, How? do you misplace a nuclear warhead? Uh, it's, four, it's, it's somewhere between four and happen? six. There's nuclear weapons that we cannot find. One is too many. One is too I many. I mean, even thinking about losing one seems bad. I mean, they, they say that they're not in danger of being able to be used or anything like that. But still, still, having <sighs> nuclear... That's but you're pissed excuse. at me because the M4 I is be gone? Because like, I can't find my poncho liner? Yeah. I shouldn't be able to go to the pawn shop and, and pick up a new <laughs> right, yeah. outside of you know Fort, Fort yeah. Liberty. 
Col- color me, you know, silly for that. So one, what they're whatever. doing, because they had that new program where if you're not using it, you can turn it in. Some of their units have dropped from a 59 page to a 39 page inventory. And the, not only that, but the way that they go through these inventories are a lot more streamlined. So they can say no changes, no changes. If they didn't use any of the gear from the last month, they could do no changes. And it's gone from an average of two hours every month that they've had to do it for the entire company. That I mean, that adds up to whatever, like a couple hundred hours of man hours or whatever. So now they can go from two hours to it's taking them about 15 minutes, which is a huge difference in like your training time and what you're able to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And also I was, I recently put this out on, um, the internet cause I was curious if you still get issued e-tools and apparently you still get issued e-tools. I'm not sure why we're still getting e-tools issued to us. That seems like it's one of those things like, well, we just, we've always issued an e-tool. So let's keep issuing e-tools. Whereas with this program now, it sounds like, all right, we can give all the e-tools back cause nobody's digging foxholes yeah and, and but the trenches. moment that you Listen. do it's the moment you're gonna need a e-tool gotta have that bad boy you're i mean right. there's just so many have you you're seen so you know who kicks our ass in the e-tool department china china's e yeah i was gonna say don't they have a good e-tool, one man that, it'll chop down trees like they i'm gonna actually i'll post a video like in this part so go to rumble and search zero block 30 on there um and you can check it out i'll put it in this part where you can see some of the things these e-tools do and it is remarkable man they have they have like e-tool competitions of who can get out of the jungle just using their e-tools they use it to cook they use it to climb they use it to cut trees down they use it to sew they use it as like um uh or whenever they're going down a little canoe they use it for everything and it's phenomenal we need those bad boys in our arsenal as well all right let's move on to some save rounds and alibis cons what do you got yeah, I'll just say for the army, it's just it's it's refreshing to see a branch of the military starting to think through problems that have existed for a long time, like missing equipment or excess equipment, as opposed to as we've said so often, well, it stunk for me, so it should stink for everyone. It's like, no, let's figure out a better way to do this. So I think that is uh refreshing um that we are uh moving in. You know that what direction. we should do, cons? Um and then how hmm. I'm sure you've seen that those apps where let's say you have tiddlywinks. Were you a tiddlywinks guy? I know it. Okay, never so you have tiddlywinks. It. Let's say you throw all your tiddlywinks all over the floor. You can have a app on your phone, look over and scan it and count how many tiddlywinks you have. Why in the world can't we yes. develop if we can develop lasers that can go across the ocean and put like a pinhole through something. If we could do all that kind of stuff, why can't we figure out an app where a company commander could just have everybody lay things out and you scan it and see what's missing? Yeah, don't, I think either you told me about this or maybe my buddy Steve, because his son is very big into Legos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't there that is that thing. thing. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, and it like tells you an inventory. Yep. That was the word I was looking for before, by the way, doing an inventory. You get an inventory of all the pieces that you have so you know what you're working with. And not there just that, the way. Legos thing will and if teach not, you what you can make from it. It scans it yeah, and it'll give you like what yeah. you can actually build from that. You should if Lego That's can do cool. it, DARPA should be able to figure that out in a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if they haven't, let's let's put that together and and then retire yeah. off of that. We need to be That'd advisors be amazing. at DARPA. Um, yeah. Um, and then uh, last thing, I caught um, a, a tail end of uh, the movie Courage Under Fire with Denzel Washington the other day, and it just kind of made me laugh because at the core of that movie, you just have a random officer getting assigned to do an investigation that he may or may not be qualified to do because his the whole crux of that movie is investigating the medal of honor for uh the pilot and it just reminded me of the time i got assigned when i was working in the s3 shop i got assigned to do an investigation a 15-6 investigation on a soldier who died from a drug overdose on the source of where he got the drugs if he was involved with a uh, drug ring and all these legal and, and, uh, different, uh, drug related offenses, buddy, 
I, I wasn't no. qualified at all to do that. And then I had to write up this big legal document that I had to send to legal. I must have traded that back and forth with legal 10 times before they said, okay, this is good to go. Because they're qualified and trained to, to write these sorts of investigations. You know, I, I took law classes in college. That was the extent of my training. I mean, I took a so biology test, but to I'm not that. about to do brain surgery on somebody. <laughs> you know, like it's just right. silly, like the things. And I think that's actually changed some now where they will actually make investigative yeah. authorities be the one that investigates what seems like that was it should have been a no-brainer all along the way but it, it's just interesting you know people i think always ask like oh which which military movies are, are the most accurate courage under fire random dude just doing an investigation yep. that's that's pretty accurate or at least yep. it used to be um that's all I got. Yeah, I don't really have anything either. Just hope Kate feels better, man. Like it, whenever you're one of your buddies, yeah. like it's one thing if your friend has diarrhea or if your friend has like a funny little ailment, sore throat, even COVID, hell, even COVID. But when, <laughs> when you know your one of your buddies is legit in pain and can't do the things that they want to do, especially when it's kid related. Like once you start having kids and you can't help out once, you feel crazy guilty for your partner that has to do everything essentially. And then you just feel bad for them being sick. And like, like whenever Annalise had surgery, I was like, what do I do with my hands? Like there gets taken away from you. You don't have any idea. <laughs> yeah. You almost, you almost want to take that pain on yourself. Well, I don't know somehow. about that. Even though it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't yeah, want back pain. Kate can keep it. Um, yeah. No, yeah. True. true. Keep, Kate can keep that. But okay. speaking of pain, do not gloss over the fact that the exact thing I said was going to happen has already what? happened. You had a weapon in the office and people are randomly getting shot. There <laughs> it is. That looks like a fairly high powered rifle that Orange should tip. not be used in the confines. So if you want to see it, go to what Rumble happened? and check it out. I got the rifle on here. It is a legit long gun and it I'll let you even hear it. Like it like when you rack it back, it sounds real. And it's like a heavy, it's mm -hmm. a heavy um rack back too it's not like light at all it feels real and so it looks like legit yeah, it's like a legit optic on it and it's not like crazy accurate with the optic but you can kentucky windage it fine so yesterday when dan was out there he had no idea how strong it was and it's pretty powerful um so he was out getting ready to do one of the games that they do on the yak and i was like i'm gonna shoot you dan and he was like, all right. And he kind of like braced for it. And I saw like his little love handle sticking out. And I was like, well, that's where he's getting it. And it hit it like right in the perfect spot. And last night, I'll, I'll read it. Let me find my phone. Uh, last night we were texting and I, he said, um, let's, let me find it. He said, uh, I don't want to get shot. Oh, great call. I don't want to get shot again, but I kind of do. But you have to do it only when I say you can. No non-consensual shots. I said, I do not agree to your terms, but we can negotiate. I owe Nikki Smokes one to the back of the neck. He ran it today, and I can't have that energy. Um, five non-consensual shots a week is what I'm asking for. <laughs> and he said, he said, no, wow. because I don't want to take your gun away, but non-consensual shootings will lead to that. I said, this is d disappointing, but I will try. We need a compromise. Can I add it to the wheel for a non-consensual shot once a week? So I'm gonna we're going to have debates about it today, have a conversation. But I feel like I should be able to shoot people in the office if I need to. Like how, like why can't I be the office enforcer? I, I feel like I can't believe I hear, I can't believe I just heard you say those words that you think I need okay. to. I'm, 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 I mask. mean, if that captain can slap people at the collar, I can hit somebody in the thigh. <laughs> Like, uh, what is a what is the, what is the round? It's like a rubber round uh, bullet. Yeah. What does like, it look like? I think it's kind of clay, like plas like a hard plastic, but it's 0.28 grams okay. per, and it comes out at 400 feet, feet a second, which is it's pretty fast, and it does hurt. I admit. So last week was the first week that I had it, and Max from part of my take was doing squats. And I was up like up on the second level of the Barcel office here in Chicago. And so the second level looks down on the basketball court and there's like a squat rack and some gym stuff there. Max was doing squats. And I was like, Max, can I try to shoot you from up here? And he was like, yeah. I was like, I'm just trying to dial this thing in. Shot him right in the ass, like almost in the asshole. But he was wearing jeans. He was like, wasn't that bad. Then Harry, another dude that's like a producer here. He was walking across the back, the 
basketball court. And I was like, Hey, Harry, I'm going to shoot you. And he was like, okay. He was like, try to do it in my arm. And so he he held out his arm and I shot him like right in the bicep. And he was like, fuck. He was the first one that I hit like on the skin. And he comes up and it's like a huge anthill looking mound, like on the back of his tricep. And there's certain things military that I don't know will ever leave me. Somebody else being in pain that I inflicted upon them, as long as it's not major, warms my heart like no other. It makes me, when he was like, oh my God, I was so, I could not smiling like my biggest smile. Like the chipmunk laugh that Kate likes a lot whenever I'm laughing that hard. Yeah. That was happening whenever I shot Harry. I get that feeling, but that it would come from when I would smoke somebody or make them run with me or, or do PT to the point that they were crying uncle that yes, I agree. However, you're talking about, we're talking about leading from a position of fear. Imagine now you have to go to work every day in the Chicago office with the fear that uncle chaps. Might I, see, I don't you. like this con just, because we talked about this before I moved up here. These folks need discipline. And if you get out of line and I'm coming from a position of strength and I see, I see somebody, they don't know when it's going to happen. It's like a shot collar with the dog. Once that you start like a Pavlonian experience, there's going to be a action and then a correction, corrective action that's paired along with an instantaneous no. So I'm going to shoot them and say no at the same time, just like Pavlov's fed the dogs and uh, hit the bell. So eventually, when I just scream out no, everybody will stop or they know they're going to get shot. I feel like that's good for business in the office. Maybe. You've you've eliminated any plausible deniability that I have in any of this now with, with how much you've described what yeah. you plan on doing with yeah. these individuals. I would just like to say publicly, I have now gone on the record twice as saying, I don't know that this is a good idea and I do think it's going to end poorly, but you know what? I'm not there. You're going to have to. I've done the ORM. With your best I know the risk that I'm taking. Okay. I know all of those things. I know how to aim. I know how to shoot. I'm not worried about shooting somebody's eye out or any of that shit. But when we do stuff, because I have already gotten Dan to agree. We're going to have airsoft tournaments in the office where I'm going to get people pistols and they're going to be able to shoot each other with those. But it'll have like the mask over their faces where they're not going to be able to get hit. So there'll be safety stuff. But we're going to have competitions too. Like I can't wait for people to see this. So I'm getting like a carnival board and I'm going to put six balloons on that carnival board. And we're going to have all the different personalities in the office race to see who can get the fastest time. And then once we do that, we're going to move on to different challenges and make them progressively harder and harder. One of them that I want to do is get a electric car, a remote control car, have it go across carrying like an action figure and you have to shoot the action figure off the car, like just like different competitions like that. It's going to be a great time, man. And if you, if you don't want to have that good time, actually, that's what I'll do in order to participate in any of my shooting related activities. You have to sign a waiver that uncle chaps can shoot me at any given time. I think that's I think that's, I don't know that that's a good trade, pal. Everything you just described with the controlled yeah. environment and the targets that are not human beings, I think that's great. I think that's good training, and I think that will be good for camaraderie in the office. However, I do not agree with you just walking around willy-nilly shooting people. No, it's not going to be willy-nilly. It'll be a punishment, or there's not a whole lot going on in the office, and we need to spice it up for a second. One of the... So All right, have a, a good All right. reason. That's a, that's the officer enlisted divide right there. I want. I mean, honestly, cons. It's hard for me to say that I didn't become a better marine after I realized what happens after you get shot. Like I, I was absolutely a better marine after it happened, and not because of the incident itself, but because of what it kind of like opened my eyes to, like how I should be training and things mm-hmm. like that. I think it could be the same thing here. I think getting shot here could open your eyes and be like, hey, maybe I should get another blog or two out this week. That's one tactic. We'll see how it works. I'm going to shoot it in here. I'm going to shoot in the office. Ready? In the studio. Yeah. (laughs) I can tell right now, just sitting (laughs) on this call, that would not feel good. It it doesn't. I shot myself with it just to make sure. See? That's leadership too, cons. That's leadership. No, that's stupidity. I'll do it right now. Point blank range for my foot.
right. Ready? Point blank range. Okay, private file. I don't want it to. I'll... Oh, no, it didn't shoot. Okay, here we go. Last one. That's, that's not even bad. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. If people are complaining about that, they're pussies. It's time to retreat. <laughs>